how do you set up a date table in SQL Server and then use it to work out how many Sundays there are in a particular month? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. In the previous video, we created this formula, which counts how many days there are. But unfortunately, there are two weaknesses. It requires the English language. So if I change this to French, it wouldn't work. And it also requires if I was using a date part, which gives me the number as opposed to the day which date name does, it requires that we have default settings. So a good way around this is to create your own date table. That way you've got control of what language and what settings date name and date part use. So let's do that. So first of all, I want to create a table. So I'm going to drop the table if exists. This is used in SQL Server 2016 or above. Don't use this line if you are using SQL Server 2014 or earlier. Next, I'm going to create a table. I'm going to call this dates and I'm going to have my date, which is going to be a date. And then you can put in whatever properties you want. So you might want the year. So I will add that. So I'll call that my year. And that's just going to be an int. I could probably get away with small. I could probably use a small int, but just for this purpose, I'll use int. My month. Well, I can definitely use a tiny int because that's only going to be between 1 and 12. My day. So the reason why I'm prefixing this with, say, my is because I don't want to be any confusion between the SQL Server functions called year, month and day. So I want the weekday number and I want the weekday name. So first thing I need to do is to have a list of dates. And the easiest way is to use something called row number. So row number just does what it says. It gives me the row number, one, two, three, four, etc. And I just need to put an over order by, and I don't care how it is going to be ordered. So this is just a quick way of doing this. And I need a table to have the row number. So I'm going to use a built-in table called sys objects. So if I just run that, you'll see that we have numbers from 1 to 118. That's not bad, but that's only going to be four months worth. So I'm going to alias it, and I'm going to use a cross join, which I don't recommend you use unless you've got a situation like this or something very specialist. The reason is it's going to multiply this. So it's not going to be 118. It's going to be an 118 multiplied by 118, which is... 13,924. So that gets me enough for what, 30, 40 years? If you want more, and you may well do, then I suggest you use another cross join and maybe a where can be used later with a CTE to reduce the number of rows to what you want. But this is fine by me. So I've got the row number. So how do we put this into a date form? Well, I need to choose a base date, an anchor date, a first date that we are going to use. So I'm going to use, for this example, since I'm going to be projecting forward from 2010, the 31st of December 2009. Because don't forget, the first row number is 1, and I want to add this number to my base date. So what I need to do is use date add. I will add that number of days to this particular date. So if I run this, now you can see that we've got a date table between January the 1st, 2010 and the 14th of February, 2048. So what I'm going to do now is insert this into the table dates. So insert into dates and I'm just inserting in the my date column. So if I have a look now at my dates, then you'll see if I run the entirety of the code that I'm only using one field, one column at the moment. So now let's populate the other columns by using an update. So we've got all of the dates using something that's moderately tricky. So I don't want to have to keep referencing this formula in an update or an insert. I'd rather use an update when I've already got the dates. So I'm going to set the year as being the year of my date. I'm going to set the month 
as being the month of my date. I'm going to set the day as being the day of my date. I'm going to set the weekday number as being date part weekday my date, which we did in the previous video. And the name of it is going to be date name with exactly the same syntax. So let's run that and see what we get. So 13,924 rows affected, and we now have a date table. So we've got the year, the month, the day, the weekday name, and the weekday number. And the advantage of all of this is I can change the language now. I can say, okay, my language is French. However, I still get exactly the same results. It doesn't say lunes, man, mati. It doesn't say lundi, madi, and all the rest. It just keeps it in English. So that is a major advantage. You're no longer reliant on the user settings. So now we've done this, how do we count the number of days in this particular month? Well, we need to match up what we've got here with what we've got here. So the question is, is the year the same? So is the year in my date, is that equal to my year? So the advantage of calculating this year here in the update rather than saying, give me the year of my date is that this is called sargable. So it means it can take advantage of indexes. How do I set them up? If I was using the year, then you'd have to calculate the year. It couldn't use indexes. So this is a much more efficient way. Calculate it first and then use it. And it's not going to take that many bytes. When you think about it, it's 13,000 rows. Suppose there was 100,000 rows and 20 columns because we were calculating the quarter and whether it was a holiday or vacation day or that doesn't take much space at all in SQL Server. So is the month the same? So again, I just use the same things. Is the day the same? No, I don't need to look at the day because I want all of the days. So let's just have a look at what we've got so far. And you can see that we have now got 31 days. Okay, what I next need to do is ask, is the weekday name the same? So, and my day required equals the week day name. So now we are down to just five rows. And then the only thing we need to do now is just count them. So this is the number of Sundays. And we can see the answer is five. So if I change this, so that is number of Mondays. And let's just look at our calendar so we can make sure we're getting the right answer. Yep, five, number of Tuesdays, four. And let's go to number of Fridays, four, and number of Saturdays. And this will work regardless of what your settings are now or your user settings because we have previously set this up with your own settings. So you might have wanted to change the first day of the week. You might have wanted to change the language. And in fact, what you could do is have additional columns for weekday name English, weekday name French, weekday name Spanish. So have a think about what your end users could use this date table for and then set it up and they, they can just use it as needed. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, then why not look at some more of my YouTube videos? So you'll see a link, for instance, up on the top right hand corner, hopefully, to all of my functions playlists. Or why not join me in my Udemy course? It's a comprehensive Udemy course all about TSQL. So it's around 29 hours. And in this, 
we'll have a look at lots of things, including date data types and functions, and a lot more so you can craft your own TSQL queries. So thank you very much for watching this. If you like this video, then please click the like, and why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you for watching and keep learning.